This evening we will be discussing the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita which is entitled The Yoga of the Supreme Person. In the previous chapter Krishna has recommended Bhakti Yoga as the best method by which Arjuna can free himself from the entanglement of this material world. Now the 15th chapter begins by describing how to break the attachment to this material world and attain the spiritual world. After discussing importance of Bhakti Yoga in so many chapters, someone may wonder, what about the Vedas? So in this chapter particularly Krishna answers this question that the purpose of the Vedic study is to understand Krishna. Therefore, one who is in Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service is already having the knowledge of the Vedas. So the first part of this chapter uh, is Krishna's description about how to become detached from this world. So for describing this, Krishna is giving an analogy. This world may be compared to a inverted banyan tree inverted because this banyan tree of the material world has got its roots up and its branches down. So <clears throat> we do not have um, generally we are not seen a tree in which the roots are up and the branches are down. But Srila Prabhupada explains, when we go to a reservoir of water on the bank of such a reservoir, if there is a tree, then the reflection of that tree on the bank of the reservoir of water, that reflection will have roots up and branches down. Similarly, here Krishna is giving this analogy of an inverted banyan tree to help us understand that this world we are living in, this material world, is actually a reflection of the spiritual world. Therefore, this description of an inverted tree. Now, if you uh, understand what is a banyan tree, among all the trees, the banyan tree is very, very special because it can spread itself over hundreds or even thousands of square kilometers. So the banyan tree is a very very huge tree. Potentially it can grow to become a very big tree unlike any other tree. So this banyan tree this material world is compared to the banyan tree. Uh, Krishna says the living beings are entangled in, a, in this material world like one who is entangled in a huge banyan tree. Such a person he will be wandering from one branch to another branch because you cannot find the beginning or the end of such a banyan tree. So similarly this material world it's so huge that ordinarily a person cannot find where is the beginning of this tree or where is the end of this tree. Normally people are very attached to this world. So the comparison is made <clears throat> that 
one who is attached to this tree, there is no possibility of liberation from this material entanglement. Now, the Vedic hymns meant for elevating oneself to a higher status in life is compared to the leaves of the tree. Then, it is said the tree has its roots upward, which means the tree begins from the topmost planet of Lord Brahma. And one should understand this indestructible tree of illusion in order to actually become free from this material world. Now, the root of this material existence is upward means it begins from Brahma Loka or Brahma's planet. From there, the whole universe is expanded and there are so many branches which correspond to so many different planets. One should have a good understanding of this tree in order to actually become free from material entanglement. <clears throat> Krishna further describes, the branches of this tree extend downward and upward nourished by the three modes of material nature. <clears throat> what does this mean? This means on the lower branches of the tree there are humans, horses, cows, dogs and other lower species of beings. But on the upper branches of the tree there are Devatas, Gandharvas, Siddhas, Charanas and higher species of beings. The twigs of this tree are like the objects of the senses. What does it mean? This means we develop different senses when we live in this world by which we try to enjoy different sense objects. For example, our eyes, we try to enjoy beautiful forms. With our ears, we try to hear pleasing sounds or pleasing music, etc. So, this uh, senses are the eyes, ears, nose, etc. And the objects are the form, the sound and the smell, like that. This tree also has roots going down, bound to the activities of the human beings. What does this mean? This means by performing different types of pious and impious activities, we have to either enjoy or suffer different kinds of reactions in this world. The real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins or where its foundation is. What does this mean? This means no one can see the beginning of this material world, where it begins. Because we should know uh, in this universe, there are unlimited number of planets, millions and billions of planets. And this universe consisting of billions of planets and each planet having billions of living beings, this universe is one among millions and billions of universes. So, we can't even begin to imagine how vast is this material world or creation. We cannot conceive this. But Srila Prabhupada says even though it is difficult to see the beginning of this material world still, one should try to find out the cause. Just like I am the son of my father. My father is the son of his father or such and such a person. Like that, if we keep searching, we will come to Lord Brahma. Because from Brahma, everyone else is born. And Brahma himself is born from Vishnu. So finally, when one reaches the Supreme Lord, that is the end of all research work with regard to searching for one's origin. 
So therefore, Srila Prabhupada says, one should search out the origin through the association of persons who have knowledge of the Supreme Lord. By understanding the Supreme Lord, one can gradually become detached from this reflection of reality. Then by situating oneself properly in knowledge, one can cut off the connection or the attachment we have for this world and actually become situated in the spiritual world. So how to cut this banyan tree or our attachment to this banyan tree? It says here one must cut it out with determination by the weapon of detachment. What does this mean? This means one should learn detachment by discussion of spiritual science. Based on authoritative scriptures, one must hear from a proper spiritual master. As a result of discussion in the association of devotees, one comes to understand who is Krishna. Thereafter, one must seek that situation from which having gone, one never comes back to this world. Now what does this mean? This means one should actually understand Krishna's personal abode is that place. Having gone where, one will never come back to this world. After detaching from this material world, one should make Krishna's abode as one's final destination. Then, after reaching that abode of Krishna, one should surrender to the Supreme Lord, Krishna, from whom everything has begun and is extending since a very, very, very long time. So, this means Krishna is the original root from whom everything has come. And one should surrender to Krishna by performing devotional service in the form of hearing, chanting, etc. Then uh, Krishna gives the qualification for attaining the kingdom of God. He says, one who is free from illusion, one who is free from false prestige, one who is free from false association, one who is having an understanding of what is eternal, one who has become free from material lust, free from the duality of happiness and distress of this world, and who knows how to surrender to the Supreme Lord Krishna, such a person can attain Krishna's abode. So, Srila Prabhupada says, the surrendering process is very nicely described here. The first qualification is, one should get out of the illusion of this world. What is the illusion? Everyone thinks generally that uh, I am the Lord of material nature. It is therefore very difficult for such a person who thinks himself as the Lord to actually surrender to Krishna. By cultivating spiritual knowledge, one can understand that I am not the Lord. I am completely controlled. This body that we have itself is an indication that we are completely controlled. And when one comes to know that I am controlled, I am not the Lord. Who is the Lord? Krishna is the Lord of the entire material creation. What has happened in, especially in modern times, people are considering this land to belong to the human society. And they have divided this land according to their own mental concoction, thinking that they are proprietors. So they have divided into so many countries and they have a sense of belonging and they also try to own as proprietors, some piece of land. But 
this is completely false so when one becomes free from such false notion that this land belongs to me or collectively some set of people say we belong to this country or some province or community whatever when we become free from all such false association then we can actually properly situate ourselves in knowledge then only spiritual knowledge we can properly develop now to cultivate this knowledge one should be clear what is mine and what is not mine actually nothing belongs to me nothing belongs to any person of this world everything belongs to god everything belongs to krishna so when one is very very clear nothing belongs to me then there is no more illusion of happiness or distress one becomes full in knowledge and then one is able to properly surrender to krishna then krishna describes that his abode his personal abode is not illuminated by the sun moon or electricity anyone who reaches that abode of krishna never comes back to this material world so the description of the spiritual world is given here in a very brief manner elsewhere in the scriptures it is explained that krishna's personal abode is called goloka vrindavana it is a spiritual world in which there are many planets krishna's personal planet is called goloka vrindavana in that spiritual world or spiritual sky there's no need of sunshine moonshine or electricity because all the planets the spiritual planets in the spiritual world are self illuminated we have experience in this world that generally all the planets are dark but there is one self luminous planet and that is the sun planet just like the sun planet is self luminous similarly in the spiritual world all the planets spiritual planets are self luminous now because they are all self luminous they are all bright and effulgent the spiritual sky itself is very bright and effulgent where is this light coming from in the spiritual sky that is coming from krishna's planet because krishna's personal spiritual body is full of light krishna's body emits unlimited light and that light is spread throughout the spiritual world in the spiritual sky and that is also present in the material world in our world as the light from the sun so the light from the sun is originally krishna's own personal effulgence so long as we are in this material world we are bound up as soon as we reach krishna's personal abode then we become free from this bondage and we never come back to this world again now the next a uh, few verses krishna describes the transmigration of the soul what is the meaning of the word transmigration transmigration means the soul passes from one body to another at the time of death so conditioned life this is another term that is used uh, we are all situated in conditioned life conditioned life means we are habituated to live in this material world though we don't belong to this place we belong to the spiritual world we belong to krishna but because of our desire to enjoy materially we have actually been forced to take birth in this world that is the reality that's the truth so uh it is said by krishna here that all the living beings in this material world in this conditioned world actually are eternally my 
fragmental parts due to this material bondage they are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind everyone in this world is bound up nobody is free so uh, <clears throat> krishna is explaining something very very important for us to understand that we belong to krishna as his part now this part of krishna we are a spiritual part spiritual part means it's not like a material broken part no uh, the spiritual part of krishna means a spirit soul there is no question of spirit soul being broken cannot be destroyed neither two spirit souls can be joined together no uh, eternally we are parts eternally we are parts so uh, krishna explains that uh, we belong to him as his part and what kind of part we are inseparable part very inseparable part so presently when we are in this world as spirit soul we are forgetful of krishna and we are forgetful of our relationship with him that is our actual situation so krishna further explains the living beings in this material world they carry their different conceptions of life from one body to another as air carries different aromas this example is very significant this from this example we can understand just like air is passing over a rose garden the air becomes very fragrant but if passes over a a very filthy place then the air is smelling very bad actually the air is neither actually fragrant nor is it bad smelling it is carrying that aroma without becoming itself affected similarly when we enter one body take birth in a particular body we are as spirit soul never actually um, mixed up with this body we remain aloof from the body but we carry a certain conception in our mind we have a certain mentality of enjoying in a particular way according to that we get the body that krishna explains in the next verse that the living being taking one gross body obtains a particular type of senses a particular type of ear particular type of nose particular type of tongue centered about the mind thus the living being in a particular body enjoys a particular type of uh, sense objects what is the meaning of this propal explains the consciousness is originally pure but the consciousness in association with material qualities becomes adulterated real consciousness is krishna consciousness but if our pure consciousness or krishna consciousness is adulterated by some type of material mentality then corresponding to that material mentality we get a type of body just like someone wants to enjoy like a dog will get a dog's body why because dog's body means it has got a dog's ear dog's nose huh? that is suited for the dog type of enjoyment that's why the dog's body the dog senses because of dog mentality to enjoy Huh? and somebody has a human body because wants to enjoy like a human being similarly there are so many species each of the species 
of different uh, varieties of life in this world are different types of bodies with different types of senses for different types of enjoyment. Krishna says, the further, the, sorry, the foolish cannot understand how a living being can quit his body or what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of this material nature. But one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see. Now, when somebody is uh, changing body at the time of death, can we see somebody who is standing by the side of the person? who is going to die after the person actually dies can they see the soul leaving the body they cannot why because the soul is so small it's so tiny the soul cannot be seen uh, with these eyes it's very very tiny besides the soul is also something spiritual it is not some material part that we can see material object that only our eyes can see some material objects so the soul cannot be seen then how do we understand so this understanding or perception is possible through knowledge what kind of knowledge the knowledge that is described in the bhagavad gita or such vedic literature which first of all explain or help us understand every living person living being is spirit soul not the body so the spirit soul is completely separate from the body so, if this body is appearing to be having life, that life is not due to the body. It is due to the presence of the spirit soul. It is due to the presence of the soul. The moment the soul leaves the body, the body is simply dead body. So, until one understands this knowledge from the proper source, one cannot actually perceive the soul leaving one body, entering another body, etc. So, Krishna clarifies, the endeavouring transcendentalist who is situated in self-realization can see all this very clearly. But those who are not situated in self-realization, though they may try to see, they cannot see what is actually happening. So, the real purpose or goal of yoga practice is self-realization. What is that self-realization? To first of all realize, who am I? I am not this body. And this body is changing. I am the unchanging spirit within this body. At the time of death, I have to leave this body. Then I have to accept another body. This is self-realization. So this self-realization, if that is not the goal of somebody who is practicing yoga, then they can never come to knowledge, proper knowledge, proper understanding, because we, they can never see. Yeah. If somebody just practices yoga for some uh, weight reduction, <laughs> for some peace of mind, such people cannot uh, uh, be situated in self-realization. That's not possible. Next, Krishna explains how he maintains all the living beings in this world. The splendor of the sun which dissipates the darkness of this universe is due to me, Krishna says. And the splendor of the moon and the splendor of the fire are also from me. That means all the light that we get from the sun, from the moon, from the fire are all due to Krishna. As I explained a little earlier, the sun is giving out light because of the effulgence of this spiritual sky called Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti means a spiritual light. That spiritual light is reflected in the sun planet as sunshine. And what is the moonshine? The moonshine is reflected light of the sun. And the fire, what is fire? After all, the trees, they are absorbing sunshine and those uh, trees, when we cut the wood of the tree and light that wood, 
the same energy which has been stored already in the wood as uh, sunshine which is stored energy in the wood that is what is coming out as light of the fire when we light up the wood similarly even coal uh, coal is stored uh, energy of the sun and that's why when we light up coal there is light and heat or even some precious stones they have certain types of minerals they are able to absorb sunshine over a very very long period of time and then they become uh, self effulgent gems so all this is originally light of the sun only and the sunlight itself is originally the light from the spiritual sky then krishna says i enter into each planet and by my energy they stay in orbit so many planets are floating in the sky who can explain such huge heavy uh, planets how can they float that is only because krishna has entered into each of these planets and he is sustaining them in their orbit now the planets are not stationary they are moving in their orbit but the movement is so smooth can we ever feel the earth is moving in its orbit we are on the earth so do we ever feel any vibration due to this movement the scientists have calculated the earth is moving in the orbit at such a high speed but we never feel except of course when there is earthquake otherwise we never feel that the earth is actually rotating in its orbit so that is because krishna has arranged it perfectly that we don't feel any 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 uh, inconvenience hmm? so he is responsible for the movement of uh, each planet in its orbit and it is able to uh, float in the in, in the in the sky then krishna says i become the moon and thereby supply the juice of life to all vegetables now whatever vegetables or fruits that are juicy and succulent are due to moonshine this is not known to the scientists yet but the bhagavad gita is revealed by krishna that krishna makes all these vegetables and fruits juicy and succulent by nourishing them with some moonshine then krishna says i am the fire of digestion in every living being and i digest the four kinds of food stuff by the air of life or life air in our body there is one special type of air circulating called prana vayu or life air prana you would have heard this name prana prana means it is the it is the the vital energy that is making this body work we eat some food generally the food gets digested and we don't know how it actually is digested but actually it is krishna who is situated in our belly as the fire of digestion in sanskrit it's called vaishwanara it's a it's a fire that is there in the stomach that fire burns up the food we eat and actually converts it into different uh, uh, parts of the body it's like some portion of the food is converted into flesh some portion into bones some portion into blood some portion into some skin like that and uh, it is krishna who is digesting the food you see how krishna is very very much intimately connected with our life in this world now krishna further says i am seated in everyone's heart and from me comes remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness we have heard this earlier also that krishna is seated in everyone's heart as paramatma but what is he doing there he is actually 
giving us every moment he is giving us knowledge or intelligence we all take help of our intelligence every time we do any activity just like if you go out of the your own apartment of course now you are all um, locked up in the apartment but let's say you to go out to buy some vegetables now as soon as you go out of your apartment you know based on where you want to go whether you should turn left or right how does it actually happen you don't consciously always make a choice generally if you are uh, been used to going to a certain place from your apartment you just go without paying particular attention but actually what is happening it is krishna who is giving direction in the form of intelligence so krishna is active in our heart as parmatma as the super soul he gives knowledge he gives remembrance and he also gives forgetfulness now we would like to remember something pleasant or something useful we would like to forget something unpleasant something which is a just a very very bad experience in the past some suffering or misery so krishna facilitates forgetfulness even and krishna facilitates of course krishna facilitates remembrance so he is active in so many ways these are few of the ways in which krishna explains how he is maintaining all of us in the next portion krishna explains there are three categories of persons in this world first of all he says there are two categories of living beings one is called fallible fallible means they are subject to fall down and there is the infallible those who don't fall down so all the living beings in the material world are called fallible they are subject to fall down and all the living beings in the spiritual world are called infallible so here in the material world every living being is bound up is conditioned is uh, trapped in illusion and in the spiritual world all living beings are liberated they are free they are not uh, bound up and uh, krishna says that uh, besides these two kinds of living beings the greatest personality is krishna himself who has entered into these worlds and is maintaining them krishna only enters into everything in this material world everyone's heart and every uh, atom of every material thing and he maintains everything because krishna is above both the fallible and infallible the bound up living beings and the liberated living beings he is above both he is the greatest personality the supreme personality so he is called the supreme person in sanskrit it is called purushottama the greatest personality hmm. and krishna concludes this chapter by telling that anyone who knows krishna as that supreme person greater than everyone else the greatest such a person is actually knower of everything one who knows krishna knows everything because krishna is everything and such a person engages in devotional service to krishna the result of such knowledge is that person actually engages in devotional service to krishna this is the highest perfection of life for anybody and one who is situated in devotional service with knowledge of krishna as the greatest personality actually is the wisest person and such a person will always be situated in the highest perfection of life that's the end of this chapter hari krishna